I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, today I want to look at uh, Romans 7, verse 14 to 25. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Amen. Uh, please read the rest. Romans 7, verse 14 to 25. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before your throne of mercy. And we pray, Lord, that you forgive us our sin. We pray, Lord, that you cover our sin with the blood of Jesus Christ who, at who atoned for us at Calvary's tree. We thank you for your word, Lord, that gives us encouragement, that teaches us and comforts us, Lord, to lead us home. We just pray now, Lord, as we read, that you'd open our hearts to understand, to accept, and to live by your word, Lord. Teach us now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you see here, Paul was frustrated. He outlines in Romans 7 uh, what we as pilgrims all go through on this journey. Uh, when we are measured against the law of God, that what we despise, we find ourselves doing. And what we want to do, we find ourselves not doing, which is the desires of the spirit to do spiritual things, to accomplish good things. We don't do that. It can be very crushing. And you cause you to question yourself that, am I really a, a believer or not? And the agony comes from that realization that our sinful flesh refuses to obey God. Instead, it is attracted to sin. Now, this can happen regardless of our well-intended desire to save God with our minds, our body, our soul. We find ourselves sinning. Our bodies just want to sin. Paul wants us to do the right thing. And Paul wanted to do the right thing. But his body did not respond. Instead, it responded to sin. And this frustrated him deeply. All believers who read these verses, I think, ought to closely uh, identify with this frustration felt by Paul that he expressed. He was in anguish due to the feebleness of his fleshly body. It caused him to express these words. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Romans 7, 24. And these words may seem, wow, there is no answer. What do we do? Now, we are confronted by a dilemma. On one hand, we have the tendency that I've just expressed, that Paul expressed, for our flesh to be attracted to and to succumb to sin. And on the other hand, we try to live righteously by the dictates of God that we know we should do. Now, if God did not provide an answer to this quandary, we would hardly dare to press on living. But by the grace of God, there is an answer. God has a solution for you and I. So regardless, my brother, that or my sister, you struggle with sin, you tell lies, you are lustful, you are angry, without cause, whatever it is that you're doing, you steal, you cheat, whatever it is that you're doing constantly, that you find your flesh attracted to, maybe sexual sin, whatever it is that you are attracted to that carries on and comes back at you, where your body runs toward, I want you to understand that Paul's words are not aimed at discouraging us, but to reveal the weakness of the flesh. There's nothing good in the flesh so that we can be fully prepared to live godly lives. Paul provides an answer in Romans 8, verse 1 and 7, to 17. Now these verses gives the believer ecstasy. We feel so ecstatic when we read those because we are now under his grace. <laughs> so amen, my brother. We have a way out, my sister. Let's just read uh, what uh, verse 1 of chapter 8 says. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. <laughs> amen. 
best you. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. <laughs> so brother, sister, God has given us a way out. We have to run and hide under his word is the man of Psalms 1 and everything will be okay and that body eventually will come down and obey the spirit it's gonna be a battle and it's gonna fault that body is gonna want to run to what it does but your spirit is in the hands of God have a good week God bless you <laughs>